And so while, you know, newspapers go to town on this, you get lovely headlines, pagan, heathen, and so on. And yet you will find that in most witches, such as myself, there is indeed a very deep religious awareness. It may not be understood, but it is there. Then, you know, this is interesting because the first impression of the witch as little kids reading books, whether it be legends or fables, the witch is always, generally she, the woman, has been on it, of evil, is it not? Uh, yes, it is, but you should also read some Italian fairy stories where the witch is the beautiful little girl. You know, it varies a little in its So country. then, in Italian uh, fairy tales, the and witch is the good fairy. Yes, mm. and you know there is so little difference between the fairy godmother and the witch, really. So aren't they both part of the same person, of perhaps, course, the yes. would say? Because you have 51% good, perhaps, and 49% not so good. And this makes up a person, yeah. and it can that's a razor's edge, to be honest. Sort of a spiritual seesaw. But the yeah. point is that witches acknowledge this. We know that the evil is, is in a good person. But the ah. good person often doesn't believe that he can have any evil in him. So the witch is really a psychiatrist, isn't she? The witch has always been in every community, the psychiatrist, the psychologist, the midwife, the doctor, the professional person in the community. And today in the 20th century, she is consulted just as much as she was thousands of years ago. You know, politicians from all over the world still beat a path to my door, mm -hmm. secretly. What do they want to find out? Everything you could possibly uh, you uh, think of. I tell them to the best of my ability what I think would be helpful, not always what they want to hear. Do you tell Harold Wilson uh, his, about his attitude toward, uh, <laughs> say, Lyndon B. Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> that Harold Wilson, too, is a man. <laughs> now, shall we? <laughs> and also could be ill. <laughs> and... Uh, mm. Our guest is Sybil Leake, who uh, is a very articulate... Which is always articulate, I take it. Yes, because they have a little built-in wisdom in them and the ability to let this wisdom come out. And are not afraid of it coming out. I suppose what you face most of all, you know, in contrast to the Gloucester Witch, the uh, mm -hmm. song about whom opened this program, who was physically persecuted, uh, she was perhaps burned or hanged, uh, the persecution you face really is one of people... Uh, sort of patronized, isn't there, or being sort of uh, kidding you, or... Yes, you know, the, the eternal thing of, uh, did you come in on a broomstick, mm. after the five millionth question yeah. becomes a little boring mm. to, if you have got any sort of mind at all. Yes. Uh, you know, and I suddenly feel that I'm, I am patronizing these people because I think, how little do they know, and why have they not progressed a little to, to learn more? Then you're not anti-science. As you oh, said no. earlier, you I have use a, I, uh, whatever there's... I think you must use yourself. everything. If you're going to... This, I think, is probably why I have, I have earned the name that I have for myself. There are many people who are interested in occultism, witchcraft, mysticism, who are very content to just be that and forget that this world is important. Now, I think if I have this ability, as I know I have and has been proved, to move in another dimension... I must respect that dimension, but also I must be something in this dimension. I must see the beauty in this dimension. I reject nothing in this life, no. nothing at all. So this, this perhaps this is a fascinating point here, that there's an impression perhaps of witches in the 20th century is that it's a cop-out, if you know what I mean. Maybe yes, it's not. Of, it say, is certain not. evangelists mm -hmm. who, uh, who yes. are laying on of hands. Yes, and, uh, now, you don't it is not. This. No, now, this is uh, one thing that, in, that intrigues me, particularly in America, because all, everyone in America seems to be looking for an escape hatch. And the one thing that witchcraft is not is an escape hatch. It demands of you, and it, you have to give. And it is no substitute for personal endeavor. But the wonderful thing is... But the magic of it all is it helps to extend your horizons. It helps you to be a little more than yourself. It takes you along uh, wonderfully adventurous paths in a much more interesting way. And you, you've really got one eye in one world and one in the other. And so life is an adventure. You very rarely meet an unhappy witch in the 20th century. That's a fascinating point. And the witch then perhaps both is both a psychiatrist and a poet. I mean, the element, yes, the aspect of poetry. Because if you're near to nature, if you are close to vital things, real truths, there must be a poetry in you. You know, the first thing I ever had published when I was 16 was a book of poetry. And reviewers didn't understand that this 
poetry was not really the work of a girl of 16. It had a maturity about it. It was the accumulation of, of all my family in this poetry. Their eyes were seeing the things. I was just interpreting for 500 generations of witches. You're talking about uh, 500 generations of witches, and that and there's not, a, not that I, you don't mind if I laugh now. No, no. Mind. There's not no, no. happy witch. You also have a, a, a nature about you that's good. This yes. is the opposite of the mythical witch you read about in the fairy mm. tales. And, uh, you said, not, how many witches are there? I mean, is, is there, has there ever been a census taken of witches in the world? Well, we're a little nearer to a census at the moment than we've ever been, because there are about 8,000 8, in Britain. I personally know 800 in America, and I'm talking of authentic witches who understand the principles of the religion. There are about 8,000 in Australia, certainly more than that in Germany. You know, there's a few million scattered around yeah, the world, I mean. yes. And this is really rather wonderful to think that despite all the perse persecutions of a minority religion, that uh, this craft, Wicca, the craft of the wise, as we call it in Europe, craft has survived. I have survived, despite persecutions and being driven underground. Are and you? So uh, are there? Is there a driving underground today in certain uh, parts of the world? No, it practice? is coming uh, much more into the light, and I'm delighted about this. Uh, I would like to see it much more, much more into the light. In this way, I think the time has come now when the witchcraft rites could be examined by the rest of the world. There's nothing that one should be ashamed of in them. And the people would see that within these rites are the elements of the very essence of religion, a very simple, uncomplicated religion that was built for man who was not expected to be God. Is it possible for you to describe the, or talk about these rites? This is the difficulty. This is the verboten part, the forbidden part at the moment, in which I fight against myself in witchcraft. But when you think it's only 13 years since the laws were repealed, it's perhaps a little mm -hmm. early to expect mm -hmm. that well, the full... Right still held underground. Yes, right. the, the actual rights are still... Question. You know Arthur Miller's play, The Crucible? Oh, yes. And there you recall uh, there was uh, the practice of what... The girls were hysterical, yes. you recall, mm -hmm. kinds of black magic, a result of which innocent mm -hmm. men and women were hanged to yes. witchcraft for dissenting. Uh, you probably feel unhappy about the play, I would guess. Yes, I went to the first night of the opera of this in San Francisco, and I did feel very unhappy about this because it was as if, you know, centuries and centuries of injustices were there before my eyes because of the millions of witches who were hung or burned, not all of them were witches. Many innocent persons were. And I meant perhaps unhappy about that uh, because he spoke, he, he was equating hysteria too, if you recall. Yes, well, there is a certain amount. In fact, there is today in the younger element who suddenly wake up one morning and say, goodness me, I've tried everything, LSD, I've thrown up through buses over, now what can I do? Oh, today I'll be a witch. And that can generate a form of hysteria in young people. It's not authentic uh, witchcraft. No, this is not, because there's, is it's, there's, discipline, in which, there's discipline in witchcraft because you cannot achieve any effects of magic without discipline. The magic is only as good as the operator. And if it is, you're not good, it comes back up on you. In the old days, you know, the temple priests who didn't perform their magic properly were flying over the cliff. So they so had to be good to survive. Question. You're talking now, it's interesting, you speak of magic, at the same way you speak of a certain craft of magic, too. Or yes, art I do, magic. because I think that in magic is a craft in as much as the, as the technical knowledge involved, the right words at the right time, the right dance at the right time, because dance is very much linked in witchcraft, as it is in, in anthropology, in the primitive tribes. This was the first expression of emotion, dance, wasn't it? Yes, so there's always, there is a dance involved with witchcraft. Oh, yes, craft, indeed, there is. And dance also represents certain a joy of life, too. Yes, and uh, uh, dance is ecstasy. associated, you know, the difficulty is that witchcraft is often thought to be so greatly involved in fertility rights, but these fertility rights were not the fertility rights of the human beings. It was for the survival of crops, to see people through winters when there were no refrigerators. Yes. A very different thing. The thing about witches, again, early in the word, uh, The Jackdaw and the Witch is your recent book, uh, again, it's available, Prentice Hall to the publishers, deals with this a little uh, divining bird, the jackdaw, yes. and how you met it, is that it? Yes, and it also is the special relationship between my youngest son, Julian, and this bird, but also there's a great deal, 
I think, of magic and philosophy in the book. Although it's a book for all ages, the publishers could not say this was a book for children, it wasn't a book for adults. It had this mystical quality. But beyond it all is the study of how the bird goes into all sections of society and can say things that no human being can say. But he says many things that a witch could say. And he was known to go to the common meetings and newspaper... A coven meeting. Yes, that the is coven the... coven is a gathering. A of gathering of witches, yes, the authentic gathering. And newspaper reports from all over the world have always said, is Mr. Hotfoot Jackson, or Hotford isn't Jackson he... Hotfoot Jackson is a jackdaw. Yes, or isn't he a familiar? And even at the end of the book, I think the reader is left with this question. Not quite sure, but one thing they are sure about is that this bird is no ordinary bird. You know, since you mentioned you used the word familiar, perhaps we should talk about this a bit. The jackdaws are familiar. We hear talk, reading, uh, legends, story about the old woman and her cat familiar. We know in, mm -hmm. during the uh, difficult time old ladies were having in, in uh, colonial New England, uh, many of them lived with cats. And, well, familiar is what, then? Well, a familiar is the pet of a witch who can communicate with her and perhaps is slightly misunderstood by neighbors who cannot communicate with it. But you know, how many people do you know who say, I talk to my dog, or my dog understands every word that I say? It's perhaps not so far-fetched to think that the witch, with her extra knowledge, may indeed talk to her familiar you know, or pet. I, could, I wish I could find this little record. It's very simple. It's a, uh, a man taking tapes in New York City. It's about a simple, lonely little old lady uh, living, uh, I think a pensioner, living with a little dog. And she's describing her little dog and the little dog could answer her questions, just loneliness. Mm. And the little dog could open the jar of preserves, and the little dog would dance mm. around the roof, and the little dog died, and she was lonely. But suddenly it occurred to me that she, in a sense, uh, could be, uh, very informally, a witch. That is, there was an understanding was of her and the rapport. dog, because they'd lived together yes, so long. there was a rapport. Yeah. And it's not surprising that in ordinary life, when you have the pets who can do these things, that with the witch's pet, with the extra knowledge she has, and the choice of the pet, something good, unusual well, could happen. Of the familiar than the one, the subhuman. I perhaps you didn't use the word subhuman. The non-human. The <laughs> elemental. Humans are kind of subhuman. <laughs> yes, I didn't say where's the word division. Yeah. But, but the, the elemental spirit. The cat is r relatively new then. You said the, the, yes. the cat is a familiar. Yes. And you know, at the time when witchcraft went underground in the Middle Ages, it was the time when, after living in peaceful, uh, co coexistence with the newly established Christian church, the new church suddenly decided to go into politics and was not content with a spiritual uh, approach to religion. And this was the conflict. It was not a conflict of heresy, as many people think. It was a conflict of money, because the witches had money and land. And when a witch was denounced, the church could take the land. This is a very fascinating But point. also, just at this particular time, a new animal, domestic animal, was introduced into Europe, and this was a cat. It wasn't even a black cat. It was a striped, marmalady cat, type of cat, rather wild-looking, and was not completely domestic, and was not completely understood. And had a slight, you know, a cat has a slightly peculiar look about the eyes, any cat. And so anything that was a little difficult to understand was lumped on the other side of evil with the witches. So and the cat went along with the witches. It's a matter of the stranger or the strange creature. Yes, or the, the strange, strange creature. Being, mm -hmm. being the enemy. Yes. And when we really come back to this again. Because society doesn't really love itself, it loves the people who are going along the same route. And you know, there's a wonderful, wonderful uh, piece of poetry by Toro, the Massachusetts poet um, Beat of Another Drum. Do you know this? Listen one. to the sound of a distant, Ten, different drummer. Yes. Mm -hmm. If he is out of step with you, maybe he is hearing the beat of another drum. And I think this is so true. I love this. I haven't got the context exactly right, but I, I know the well, feeling of it in my inside. Thoreau, in a sense, was uh, witch hunted himself. He yes. spent time in jail mm -hmm. for not paying taxes for a yes. war. It's an unjust mm -hmm. Mexican war. You know, I think it's if only yeah. we had a little tolerance in anything, I'm no evangelist for witchcraft. I don't really care about other people 